Hey guys, at four quid here. First video on the new channel. And today, I'm gonna show you how to 3D print your WoW character. All right, the first thing you wanna do is head over to the WoW Model Viewer website. Click download WoW Model Viewer now. The next page is gonna show all the different versions of WoW Model Viewer. Currently at the time of posting, I'm using Shadowlands. You might be using a different version, but I'm just gonna go with Shadowlands. Once you open WoW Model Viewer, it's gonna ask you to load World of Warcraft. Make sure you've used World of Warcraft recently and you load retail at the latest version that you're currently on. For me, it's 9.2.5. It'll take a second to load, so while you're waiting for it, head over to the WoW Armory and search the character that you wanna upload. Once you have your character, check over your armor and make sure you're wearing everything that you want to be printed. Typically, higher poly armor sets work better as once everything's printed in a single color, you'll be able to see more detail. Copy the link at the top of the page, head over to WoW Model Viewer, and go up to Character. Here, click Import Armory Character. I've already got a link in there, but I'm gonna do it again just to show you. Put your link in, you hit okay. Now we have our character in WoW Model Viewer. Now for the first thing you might notice here is that my bow and arrow is actually on my right hand, but I would rather it on the left hand. So if I do choose to use the bow draw stance, it will actually render properly. So what we have to do is we have to go over to the right hand side here and go to right hand. It'll take a second to load. Once that's loaded up, you'll see everything on the left here. You want to just click none because we don't want anything in that hand. Hit OK. Now we're going to go over to the right hand and I'm going to search up the same bow and arrow that I just had on the left. That's Vicious Gladiator's Longbow. Again, it's going to take a second to load. So go make a sandwich, make a copy. Here we go. All right, now that we got the bow on the proper hand, we're gonna figure out what stance we wanna put our character in. So we go down here to animations, and there's a scroller with all the different stances in it. I'm gonna use a stance called Breath of Fire because it looks good on an orc. It kinda looks like they're bloodlust. From here, you can pretty much find any stance used in game and emote, etc. All right, there we go. Now you might notice that that's going way too fast, so if you go over here to the scroller, you can actually slow the speed down and get the proper point in the emotion that you want to use. Once you've found your point, you hit pause. Take a look at your model and make sure that, you know, his face isn't being smushed into his arm, and you're going to get every detail that you want to print. This looks pretty good, so we're going to go with this. Everything looks pretty good here. So the next step is exporting your model as an OBJ file. By doing that, you go up to File, go to Export Model, and go to OBJ. And one more thing I'd like to mention before we go into our slicer. The spell effects on armor and weapons can sometimes affect your print. So go into View, go to Show Animation Control, and scroll down to the different armor pieces that you want to modify. Here you can actually change the values, and by going to those green highlighted values in that box, by double clicking them, you can actually add and remove some of the spell effects. This will greatly reduce your headaches when you move it on into the slicer. Now for the slicer that I'm using, I'm, I have a resin printer, so I'm using Cheetobox. You might have an FDM printer, so you might be using another program. Cheetah Box doesn't have a problem opening OBJ files, but I can't speak for the other programs. Now once I have my file in Cheetah Box, you may notice that it's very small. Make sure you lock your ratios and scale it up with your scroller.
Now we got it to the proper scale that we want. So what I'm gonna do since I'm using a resin printer is I'm gonna move all the details facing the build platform. This will be easier when we're running supports, that way any pointing objects facing downwards won't get screwed up. All right, so I have it positioned there and I think that should be good to print. I'm gonna go over and add supports to it now. All right, so I've used the programs feature to add all the supports and I do notice that there's some frills coming off the shoulders. These might be a problem and I honestly don't think they're gonna print too well, but I'm gonna throw supports on them anyway, just in case they do print, at least they're supported. All right, so that's looking pretty good. He's got these little, uh, like a little pointed nose ring here. So I'm gonna add a couple supports to that. Overall, we're looking pretty good here. I think we can move it on to the slicer. One more thing. If you want, you can go up to the top here and hollow it out. I'm not doing that because I've had a bunch of failed prints that way where resin's been trapped inside them. Maybe you guys know the fix for it. I currently don't. I'm gonna set my exposure times to three seconds. It works for me in this climate. I don't know what works for you. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Save your file onto whatever USB device or however you get it to your printer and you should be good to go. All right, so we finished up our print here. I just took it out of the curing station and there we go. I hope it, uh, you can see it with all the, my camera here, it's not very focused. I did have a problem with the bow and arrow. Uh, I had to glue it back together. A little part broke off when I was breaking it free from the supports, but that's no big deal. It turned out pretty decent. Now, when it comes to painting, you know, some of you guys probably already play Warhammer 40K. That might be one of the reasons why you bought a resin printer in the first place. So I'm assuming you got the Citadel paints kicking around. They work really well. If you don't have that option, you can go to the dollar store, pick up, uh, you know, a bunch of those uh, folk art paints. If that's what you guys carry in your area, I don't know. Uh, you can print yourself a base. You can print yourself a mount with the model viewer. You know, go to the uh, local collectible store, buy yourself a baseball case. Those work really well. You know, you, you print the base, you glue it down, you stick it all together after you painted it. You're gonna have to get a little bit, you know, creative with the paint because the details don't print into the model itself, meaning all you're gonna see are, you know, geometrical shapes. You gotta kind of freehand the uh, the image over it. That shouldn't be a problem for some of you. You know, if you gotta dumb down some of the details, then give her. Oh fuck, the cat's tearing everything apart. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Uh, I'm gonna be streaming Twitch. Don't really have a set schedule, but I will be working on that. I appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And don't forget to bring the sauce.